Hey everyone, welcome to another Behind the Hype. My name's Ryan. Behind the Hype is a series of virtual meetups that we've been doing for a while now, where we cover different topics in fintech, finance, and technology. Today, I'm very excited that we're hosting a session on women in fintech. Usually, we've actually run this uh, in the past physically. Uh, so Shireen in our Paris office has run it physically as a lunchtime meetup, and this is gonna be our first virtual version of the session. So I will pass it over to Shireen to introduce our speaker for today. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Hello, everyone. So we're really excited to have our first uh, Women in FinTech online meetup today. And um, we're really honored to have um, talented and inspiring female leaders with us today. So um, I'll briefly introduce them, but you'll hear much more from them um, throughout the session. Uh, really excited to have with us Emily Tubo. Emily is the co-founder and CEO of uh, Serendipity Tech, um, which is a cybersecurity um, startup focused on ID verification and data security management. Uh, we're also really excited to have with us um, Anne Lorclein and uh, Brune de Linares, uh, both from Accurate. So um, Anne-Laure is the COO and Brune is uh, the chief of sales at Accurate. And Accurate is a, an insure tech company focusing on uh, using AI and machine learning for pricing in the insure tech space. And you'll hear uh, more about both companies a bit later. Uh, we're also excited to have with us um, our very own Caroline de Rousseau. Uh, Caroline is uh, R&D manager at Finastra. She's also uh, the site ambassador in Paris for the uh, women at Finastra network. And uh, before handing it over to uh, Caroline for uh, a brief introduction, I just want to say a few words about Finastra and the women at Finastra network. So um, Finastra is a fintech company. Uh, we build solutions for banks um, across different um, activities. So we cover things on uh, retail banking, corporate banking, capital markets, payments. And we do also have FusionFabric.cloud, which is our uh, platform for open development where we uh, collaborate actively with fintechs. Uh, we're a company with 10,000 people and um, I would say, and I'm sure Ryan and uh, Caroline would agree here, diversity and inclusion is really important to us. And that's why we have this uh, Women at Finastra network um, that is aimed to empower women within the Finastra organization. Um, and with that, I'd like to hand it over to um, Caroline to give us a, sort of a French perspective to the Women at Finastra network. Thank you, Shirin. Hello, everybody. So I work at Finastra in the Paris office. Uh, I've been at Finastra for two and a half years. And it's the first time I'm working in the financial industry, but I've always worked in industries where numbers of female people were <laughs> reduced compared to number of men. Uh, let me share a few facts about um, what is uh, Finastra France and how we, and what we do at Women at Finastra. share my screen. Uh, so Finastra France is, uh, it's 400 employees. And it's, uh, it's a Finastra site that has um, a lot of different functions. We have R&D, but we have also sales, we have HR, we have legal, we have all the kind of things that we do at Finastra. We are 400 people, but with 24% women. So uh, roughly 100 women on the site. Uh, and like uh, a lot of companies, a lot of French companies, uh, the more we look at who is at the top, the less we see women. So in Finastra France, there are only two, two women in the top 30 French salaries. There are only four women in the top grades, which say, which let's say the employee le level for women out of 26 uh, with grade above 10 plus. Um, and we have what is also usual in French companies, that is that people who, are, who work part-time or uh, take a parental leave are mostly women rather than men. So at Women at Finastra, the, 
initially the initiative uh, we were uh, let's say free uh, around every location to uh, uh, brainstorm and uh, and work on some ideas uh, I think the principle was that uh, there is a, a big component which is the cult local culture that we need to be aware of. The challenges that we have in France are not the same that we will have in India or in Romania. For example, my colleagues my colleagues in Bucharest, there is 50% women in the office, even if it's software development. So that would seem very surprising in France, but in Romania, it's normal. Uh, and in India, uh, the challenges are not the same that we have in France. So uh we we were free to uh, brainstorm and work on some ideas uh let's say locally and then we have uh events that we share with other with, between the offices to make other also global let's say initiatives so what we did uh in paris was to uh let's say gather the women that were interested in working on the topic of women in in the in their career and women and gender equality and we brainstorm and we we did a few different things uh, for example we decided that we could host a lean-in event that means we partner with the lean-in organization for us it's simply making our uh, rooms available to host locally uh, the events so it's a it's a win-win kind of a situation. The leading organization has has rooms, and then we can also uh, talk about our brand, which is Finastra. Um, some of us worked on videos to celebrate uh, some of our employees. So uh, these are available on LinkedIn, and I try to provide the link somewhere unless it has already been provided. Um, So, so, I'm just losing my thoughts. So that's the kind of things we have been working on. Let me just stop sharing. And then we've also so there are so lots of single ideas and and lots of uh, different uh, topics. We so we worked on communication and inspiration such with these videos and hosting the leaning events, but we also worked internally on work-life balance. Uh, some of us worked with the HR uh, team to provide, to work on maternity leave guidelines to, let's say, promote some good practices regarding work-life balance while, on, uh, while being pregnant or while on maternity leave. And, and very important to provide recommendations regarding salary increases and bonus when you come back from maternity leave. We also uh, discussed uh, career and parenthood by putting forward men who took parental leave or part-time contracts. So there are a few of them in the company and we wanted to, let's say, uh, put a focus on these men who mostly were very proud of what they had chosen to do and. I guess they can inspire also other, other men. So always good to show that um, uh, it's not only a, a, f a female concern when you get to take care of children. And then we also uh, organized unconscious bias training. So that was organized by the HR team. We're still working on that. So unconscious bias, it covers not only the gender bias, but also other kinds of bias, but since to be uh, very important to let's say, move the lines, to make people aware that we have unconscious bias when we uh, select candidates, take decisions day to day. And the ones that I, one initiative that I really liked is that we organized women's lunch. So uh, let's say we gather women from the different teams and just have lunch together. So we need to create a network of the women in the Finastra office which is something that uh, is good because there are different functions and we tend to work R&D with R&D, HR with HR, legal with, le well, sales with sales, and it's good to have that kind of new network. 
And finally, uh, what, one tool that we worked on and that is that seems to be uh, well uh, quite useful is the French Gender Pay Gap Index. So it's the uh, mandatory index that company have to uh, comply to. So Finastra score is below the required uh, 75 score that we need to have. So it was a good um, a good uh, tool to show that uh, there is some work to do. And also the fact that there is a financial penalty linked to that uh, index uh, is, a, let's say, a, a way to put pressure on, uh, on that topic. Uh, so that's what we do at Women at Finastra. Uh, we consider that we are not leaders on that topic. We'd like to copy what is done also elsewhere. So I'm happy to hear from my uh, other people in this panel. <laughs> and thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Caroline. Um, so yeah, let's hear more from uh, Emily. Maybe if if you want to um, share with us a little bit about um, about you, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Okay. So first. Um, Thank you, Shirin. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Finestra. Um, my name is Emily Tebo, and I'm the CEO of um, Serendipitech. Uh, I'm used to learn some political sciences and history uh, on my scholarship in London and in Paris. And uh, I spent like 10 years in the State Department uh, in France. And I started Serendipitech uh, four years ago. So 2016, and uh, we are specialized in the cybersecurity, and we are struggle against fraud on the ID. So just uh, Serendipi Tech is um, trying to um, make you safe with your own body when you are a bank, when you are uh, when you are a client, sorry, of a bank, because this is the principal things, and you have. Um, to 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 make uh, to create a new confidence in this kind of um, internet and uh, digital um, confidence and uh, relationships. Thank you, um, and Laure or Bruno, who wants to go next? Um, yes, so I'm just gonna present accurate with a, a few slides. Hold on for a sec. And maybe in the meantime, I, I can introduce myself. So Brune de Linares, and I'm leading the sales and the partnership for Accurate. So I've worked for uh, 10 years in uh, IBM and then Google on uh, sales uh, on cloud platform. And I recently joined Accurate to lead the sales and the partnership. Uh, and so I'm Anne-Laure, I'm COO of uh, Accurate. Um, and uh, actually, uh, Brune and I met uh, in our previous respective positions. So we knew each other before uh, joining the Accurate uh, adventure. She was my customer. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so, so we've worked uh, together in the past, and now we're working together at Accurate. Um, so a few words about Accurate. So um, as presented by Sherin, we uh, are a company focused on uh, insurance pricing automation with uh, artificial intelligence. Um, the company, the R&D activity of the company started four years ago uh, because the uh, algorithms that uh, are used by the solution are quite um, complex to develop, so it took quite a lot of R&D investment. Um, we started commercializing the, the solution um, about 10 months ago, so mid-2019. Uh, um, and um, we have uh, about 10 insurance companies that use our solution um, on a day-to-day -day basis for their, uh, for their risk uh, modeling. And we just raised our Series A um, for um, 8 million euros uh, in February. Um, with with the European and uh, and uh, a US UK fund, so our investors are Blackfin, um, specialized in fintech, and uh, MTech, specialized in uh, in insurtech. And Accurate right now is about thirty people. Um, so 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 that's uh, that's Bruno and myself. 
Um, as I said, when Brun was at Google and, and I was at Carrefour, we uh, were working together and our background is really more around um, uh, helping large corporations going through a uh, data and, and, and digital transformation. Um, that's, that, that's, really, um, that's really our background. That's really a lot of our role today at, at Accurate. Um, and just in a few words, uh, so what we like to say at Accurate about our mission is that we revolutionize insurance pricing with transparent artificial intelligence. And we use the word transparent because to us, um, it's a way of making a difference with what we call explainable AI, uh, which is a, a way of, of simplifying uh, black box uh, machine learning models. And, and that's not applicable to the insurance sector because of the uh, transparency um, regulatory requirements of that sector. So it's something very specific to, to insurance. And that's why um, that's why we usually that's how we describe um, what we what we do. So uh, a, a very technical product uh, on a very technical use case, and so a very uh, technical DNA within uh, within Accurate. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for this uh, quick intro to uh, to Accurate and to Serendipity Tech. Um, first, I'd like actually to ask you. Uh, to explain maybe a little bit uh, more your respective roles and what they uh, encompass. Uh, maybe starting with um, with you, Anne-Laure. Um, sure, so um, I'm, I'm COO. Uh, in a startup <laughs> environment, it can be lots of things, uh, lots of different things. The way, um, the way uh, I see this role and what I <clears throat> really do at Accurate is two main things. The first thing is I'm in charge of what we call the operations. So obviously we're a young company, so it's a big word uh, to describe what's going on with uh, HR. So mostly um, delivering our hiring plan. We're 30 people right now to <clears throat> increase um, the finance uh, aspect as well as the um, legal aspect. That's really the operation part. And then the second part of what I do is really um, take care of, of, of more strategic initiatives and projects that are uh, going to help us really get to where we want to be in terms of, of, of achieving um, the positioning and the and the and the level of, of, of positioning with, with with our clients. Cool, thank you. Uh, Brune, do you want to go next um, yeah. with yeah, chief of sales? So yes, it will be easier. So I'm charge, I am in charge of the sales and the partnership. So uh, developing the business for Accurate, but also the ecosystem, the partnership that we are building with uh, uh, consulting firms, with a data provider, and with um, solution provider for big insurance companies. So the objective is really uh, to address uh, our customers, so big insurance companies, big and, and medium insurance companies. Thank you. And uh, Emily, the CEO role. Oh, CEO role. Um, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Each time is everything. Um, I do not know yet what <laughs> is to be a CEO or to be a good CEO. So I'm just learning every day about everything. And um, now we are like uh, 20 in Serendipity Tech. Um, I do not know if I'm the best. And I'm learning about uh, everybody every time of my team each day. So we are growing up. What we know is uh, we are really specialized about um, security. And uh, we try to do the best on our expertise. Expertise, sorry. And um, we, we, we try to grow up with modesty. Um, on our specialty, so um, I do not know what is a CEO, sorry. Thank you, I think it's a very good answer. <laughs> um, next question, um, and again with you, Emily, um, can you maybe tell us a bit more uh, about the story of uh, Serendipity Tech? Like, uh, yeah, how did you start it? And yeah. <laughs> Could you please repeat the question? Uh, can you share with us a bit more maybe about the um, story about Serendipity Tech? How did you start it? What was the reason? And how did you, yeah, how did you create it, this startup? 
Um, at the now, uh, with the uh, time, I'm able to say that uh, I were, I was sorry, uh, an angry woman. Um, my chief officer at the State Department told me that um, European Commission is a serious matter, so we need a man. Uh, it was six years I were the expert on, uh, on my subject. Um, my ex-husband told me that I will be never able to create my film about my, my patients. So I quit my job and I divorce. And uh, I will be with myself and the cat and uh, responsible of myself and the confidence I have in my ID and the, the way I have to, to put it in the world, in the market. So it's for your no. So I, I always think that serendipity can use be very useful for people. Uh, usurpation of ID is very um, difficult for the victims, but nobody cares about that. Even the justice, even the police, even, even the uh, banks, no one. So. I, I, I create Serenity Tech um, with um, not a vision because it's quite uh, bullshit, but with the, 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 the real will to serve and to serve efficiently. So um, that's why we try today and we manage to serving uh, victims of uh, usurpation of either identity. And um, I think this is uh, the way we start. And uh, I have a lot of people uh, at my big surprise, uh, and I'm very, very um, um, thankful for that. Uh, they, they, they share and they make money and they help us and they continue to support us because uh, there's things to change a lot. Great. It sounds like there's a real mission behind what you're doing. I, I, I have a super S. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And yeah. it, it's great to have that. Um, and it, it makes sense of why you, you're so passionate and why you've gone to found a business. Um, I've got another question, but before I move on to that, just the format of this session is we have a few questions that we're going to ask, but we're going to open it up to open Q&A towards the end. So throughout the session, if any of the viewers want to submit a question, you can either do it one of two ways, so either in the comments section, or you can go to slide.com and use the code hype. Um, which is down at the bottom, and we'll get to your questions at the end. Uh, but next question from me to um, Bron and Anne Lee. Can you share with us what brought you to Accurate? Uh, yes, so, so uh, I worked before for IBM, and I worked with uh, Samuel, who is a CEO in Accurate. And so when we discussed about the Accurate project, it was really fully aligned with my expectation to have more impact to be more empowered in my job, to take decision, to decide what I want to do, why I want to to to, to do uh, <laughs> what I'm doing. So really to be empowered in, in my job uh, and also to be aligned in terms of values with the people I, I will work with. And it was the case with Accurate, with Samuel, but also with Anne um, as we worked together before. Uh, so it was really how we can have an impact be empowered, decide, and build a successful company and a concrete, on, more on the technological part, a concrete AI use cases that you can put in production. So it was both uh, related to my personal expectation, but also to, to a challenge, uh, quite a technical challenge that it was really interesting. Uh, for me. But I know maybe you have a hands of you. <laughs> um, I, I have so, so. Um so the, the um, several things I would say, obviously the people part was very key because I had worked with Bruin before and, and, and we discussed accurate over lunch and I don't think it took a very long time um, for me to feel like I wanted to join the project. So there's a lot of, a, I would say, just a personal feeling in that, in that decision. And then the more, uh, the more uh, I would say professional part of it is that uh, I spent many years working for um, digital transformation of, of, of large uh, companies and, and, and yeah, I'm seeing the millions of euros that they, they just they just throw into what they call digital transformation and 
there's never anything meaningful that 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 goes out of it and i have many examples um but that's not the point so so the the, the entire project of taking an ai based solution bringing it to an industry that obviously needs some type of disruption and 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 just changing that um, in a in a in a way that has an impact and that's going to really move lines from from another perspective was really um, a very strong uh, motivating factor for me to join Accurate. So, so you in this uh, panel because female empowerment is important to you. We already listened to Emily's uh, background story explaining why as a woman she felt that people doubt what she, that she could do things. Uh, Brune and Laure, I would be very interesting to know if there are something in your past experience that uh, motivates you to work on female empowerment. Uh, and, uh, so, yeah, my, my, this is going to talk for me, and so, but I think there's some similarities. I worked mostly in environments where um, leadership positions are held by uh, men, and uh, so, so it takes a lot of hard work in such environments to, uh, yeah, really find your place, uh, demonstrate what you can do, show your value, your credibility, while trying to be as close as possible to yourself as 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 you can be um and that's 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 challenging and there's yeah there's a lot of uh, difficulties there but um i think um what what's also key is is that despite the challenges sometimes you find some empowerment figures that really um, help you along the way uh, because they know that 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 it matters to have some diversity and that it brings a lot to an organization and 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 by the way um, they're not at all necessarily uh, female um, and 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 I think to me um, some of those figures made uh, made a difference uh, a couple of times in, in my career. Yes, I, I, I fully agree, and I think that uh, it's uh, it's always a challenge because we need to buy our credibility <laughs> in the first ten minutes of a meeting, or something like that. Uh, it, it's so, so it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity for us to be more combative, to be uh, yes, to to to, to really um, uh, know what we want to achieve and and, and fight for it. But it's sometimes challenging. Thank you. So I've got another question. Um, and I, I always like to ask this one uh, because I think it's it's really important to share the stories of when things have gone wrong and what you've learned from that experience. So starting off with Emily, can you maybe share a moment where something has just gone completely wrong, um, but you've learned something from it and you've moved forward? I asked the big questions. <laughs> Emily, you want to take it? <laughs> yeah, of course. So many things, so many things get wrong. Um, no, we're lucky. The, the baddest um, situation, um, I told you that uh, I learned about my Zogini in my former career, but I have to tell you that um, in FinTech and in techs, it, it was really, really um, good. You can come in, um, the behavior of the text, the behavior of everyone is very, very, very cool. So I had no trouble about that. It's when uh, VCs and some of VCs, investors, ask me um, if I need a number two, a man to help me. And is it not that I do not need a number two? Is that maybe in French, you know, there is a gel, you are a woman or a man, and they every time to ask me that if I need a man to help me. So um, this is a better situation. And maybe when, when we win a jury or a concours, and when someone asks me that if it's because I'm a woman, but it's 
kind of bit small. It's not so harming compared to what I have to deal with or to get through um, before. But, you know, it's, it means that it's not so easy that a woman can uh, empower and have a responsibility because it means that she needs a man to help her. So, we do, well, that's all. And I say no. <laughs> and then the same question to Anne Laura and Brun. Um, yeah, I'd, so as as I so as I said, uh, I think I've I've met I would say some very supporting figures in that in that area. So so there's good there's good surprises too, but um, um. The, the 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 most challenging thing I think is unconscious biases and and by the way it's not just 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 men that have them I have a lot of them too and sometimes um, I think I'm a challenge to myself so um, so so uh, yeah but I think the unconscious biases are something that's really hard to realize by definition and so typically when you're a situation where uh, you, you you enter a meeting room and there's uh, two of you and there's um, a male and a female figure and it's um, and it's sometimes going to be assumed that, um, that 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 the boss is the male figure and the and the, and the female figure is not, uh, which goes back to one point, uh, which is you have ten minutes at the beginning of a meeting to really um, yeah to really establish. Um, your credibility and your value and who you are. So, 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 yeah. Some of these situations uh, are are have been have been challenging. I I would say. I totally agree. Right, and conscious. It means responsibility and conscious bias is, is um, the worst we can do. Yes, it's the most difficult part. Yeah. Yeah, I actually really like the quote. I'm a challenge to myself. <laughs> uh, this is so true. <laughs> um, Brian, do you want to add anything on that? No, no, I, I fully agree. I think we need to be careful not to simplify too much indeed. And it's not men against women and diversity. It's, it's also uh, not only related to uh, women and men, but we discussed that with Anne-Laure and with Emily. And it's also a matter of diversity in terms of uh, age, in terms of background, in terms of nationality. And, and, and so I think it's really important also not to consider diversity only um, with the women and men uh, topic, but to have a, a broader way to, to, to see it and to address it. Um, yeah, we discussed that. And um, um, you, you will tell me, um, Brun, if you agree, but... Uh, we have the chance uh, when we were young and uh, student to know Erasmus, the program to exchange, and we have to do the same thing uh, in our firm because now we are on the situation to do it, to create it, and what we learn in Erasmus, uh, knowing new culture and having danger um, to understand, to, to not be understand, um, we, we, we have to, to, I don't know if, Maybe we have a bit privileged to have known that, but, but maybe the time in our firm to uh, continue this brainstorming, this exchanges and diversity is not men against women, and you totally right about that. It's about how we mix the ages and the uh, situation, the background, and and we we knew that when we were young. So now we have the responsibility to continue a bit. Yes, and and we. We have to say that in terms of nationality, for example, uh, at Accurate, we have 30 people working for Accurate and we have more than 10 nationalities within the company. So it's quite, it's quite easy to have this mixity and, and, and to find different backgrounds and different nationalities. Uh, we have to admit that it's uh, more difficult, uh, particularly for technical uh, role, uh, to, find, to find a woman uh, for th these jobs. So we need to be much more proactive on this topic, even if we consider diversity as something more global, broader, and that we need to address uh, not only women against men. But in terms of proactivity, 
I think we need to do something more uh, for the gender mixity that we need to have at Accurate. Yeah, on that topic, actually, uh, as fintech founders and leaders, uh, uh, any changes that you have introduced in your companies uh, in order to promote more diversity, more inclusion, not only men, women, as you mentioned, but generally speaking? Yeah, so as Brune was saying, I mean, at Accurate, yeah, we've, we've decided that we wanted to be really proactive and not just go with the flow and see what, what type of profiles we we end up getting in our recruitment pipelines and, you know, because we, because we see that, um, yeah, <laughs> if you, you, you just, you just go with the flow, you're, you're, it's likely you're not going to end up with that much um, gender diversity, at least. Um, other types of diversities, for us at least, have been easier to have without any proactivity. But yeah, regarding gender, we, we, uh, I think we are more ready to, to uh, also because of, 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 of uh, I would say, the, the general maturity of the management team, we are more ready to uh, maybe take a risk on a recruitment because we know it's going to bring um, different things or maybe assess candidates with a different, uh, yeah, from a different standpoint according to what we expect from that person specifically. Um, so, so, so I think it's it's something that because of the the diversity and the the, the maturity of the management team, we we, we have decided to really uh, be proactive early on about um, and and yeah. So so but there's other aspects as well, not just that, but yeah, it's one of the things where um, we think we need to really push. And just to to complete on that point, I think that we are really convinced that diversity is, is, is important, but it's not only related to values, it's also related to performance. And, and we want to have uh, diversity within Accurate because it's aligned with our values, of course, but also because we think that it's better for the company and for the success. So, and I think it's really important to keep, uh, to keep that in mind because it will not be decision just to slow, that will slow down a process, but it will be decision that will help us to be better and to be more performant, and we hope more, more successful. I do not agree. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, we are smaller than accurate, uh, so we do not have the, uh, the scale uh, you, you have. But the thing is, um, I met so much um, toxic women, toxic men, toxic for everybody. And recruitment is very complicated. And of course, efficiency is very, very important. But <clears throat> to my part, the best piece of advice is I, I, I ever received is... Uh, make the film as you as you are and as you want so diversity is quite a low subject and goodness and okay you're right of course brewing um efficiency is very very important but goodness is um is the best part because um uh, I, I, we we couldn't when we are very very uh, small create something great and can uh, create something very scalable without um just about efficiencies um i i saw so much people uh, very bright and very powerful uh, in their uh, uh, in that job uh, doing a bad job because there is no um something real at the um beginning of a startup and you maybe are more advanced than us but as a startup uh, i mean you have to be very very careful about recruitment and sometimes maybe it's not the thema of the uh, of the story but you can um, say no to someone very and a woman very very um, efficient but not in a good will not in a goodness and not good for the uh, next step so Recruitment is not so um, for for um, maybe Brune and I know you will be okay with me, but it's it's a mixity, it's uh, a melting pot, sorry, about so much things uh, to grow up your your company that uh, it's not about gender, it's not about old, it's not about. But uh, I I fully agree. But I think when I was talking about uh, performance, I, I was talking about group performance. How we can perform together, and I yeah. fully 
see that if we have someone that is maybe really good but not able to work with the others, uh, it, it, it's not a good idea uh, to hire him. But but I think that having multiple background, gender, age, nationality in a group help us also uh, to, to be uh, to, to be more efficient, meaning that we are able to see different. Uh, way and to address uh, issues with different way to solve it and and so to be uh, uh, more efficient yeah. as a group. But I fully agree that uh, individuals, uh, it's not enough to, to, to make a group. Yeah. But you told me something very interesting when uh, we, we are in call. You told me that sometimes the, um, the, the schedule and the planning of a firm is not the same that uh, the time of recruitment. And to be proactive, because we have the same trouble. Uh, in fact, Serendipitech, um, at the beginning, I have like um, three young guys, uh, developers, and uh, I have to be their mama. I have to feed them with pizza. I have to have uh, in my house each weekend to make them working and working and working. 22 years old. So I changed my strategy and I came back. I, I go back, sorry, to Eastern Europe. And there is full of bright women working as developing and making the jobs that okay. on the team of 15 developers, there is like seven women. So I were like very, very happy, extra, extra. And what you told me um, in France, uh, Brune, we have the same trouble. It's the, the time we find the perfect woman profile. It's quite long compared to timing of a startup so yeah no you want to, <laughs> to to answer to that because you are under it uh, yes i i can only agree it's uh just because of the numbers uh it's really really hard um to find gender diversity in in, in positions like developers um it's really something it's a huge struggle for us and yeah just the availability of the of the of the resource makes it really complicated to um wait um until you find the proper candidate which is i mean so what we've decided to do and we're at the beginning of this journey so i don't know where it's going to lead us but what we've decided to do is to really initiate a number of diversity oriented actions that are more uh, looking at the medium term that aim at um, increasing the diversity in our initial pipeline of candidates because that's the issue we have is that if we have very little diversity at the beginning of the pipeline then by the time we finish the recruitment process well, there's no diversity left just because of the rule of the numbers so so um so so that's so that's something that we're, we've we're started to work on so that we think that if we are more present with schools, uh, meetups, associations, I mean, all these actions that are uh, time consuming and, and, and have a longer uh, term payback, clearly. Um, but if we if we start now, we, we can hope that uh, further down the road, it, it will be easier um, to recruit that type of profiles uh, with more diversity. So, so yeah, we have no clue how that's going to turn out yet, but uh, it's a huge challenge for some positions to um, to, to, to find uh, the right person if you want diversity and if you have a timeline. And, and I think that uh, sometimes we need to wait a bit before hiring someone uh, just to, to be, ju just to find uh, a woman, for example, because we think that it's important. And as we are growing fast and we need to have more and more people to develop the company, it's hard to stop and to take a decision not to hire someone because we really want to focus on diversity. And I think this is, uh, this is key because as uh, Anna mentioned, if you are not doing that, you go with the flow and at the end, you don't have diversity in your team. And I think what's also key for us, I mean, because Accurate, we are 30 people. We have about a quarter uh, of those that are um, female. So in terms of um, diversity compared to our benchmark, um, I mean, the ratios in our industry are 25%. So, I mean, we are there. Um, it's it's what, what really matters is where um, is the diversity. And 
typically uh, tech teams are where it's going to be the hardest. Um, to get uh, to get diverse uh, profiles in terms of gender and 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 so um, and I've worked um, in grocery retail in the past and it's the same thing you can you can you can build um, you can build ratios of diversity in a way that's uh, not going to touch every layer of the company and really what we do is we want to bring diversity into the tech teams um, and 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 that's really yeah, that's that's really an even an, an even bigger challenge, and that's also where we have the the most needs in terms of of, of new recruits, and so that's really where it's going to be really the most uh, difficult to take the time to wait um, and and find um, and find the profiles that that we want. I think you bring up a lot of really good points. Uh, my mind's just been exploding with different ideas and different things that I've seen. Like for example. You spoke about the pipeline. I think it's so important that if you're hiring for, say, female developers, uh, looking at the pool that you're you're going out to, I, at least in the UK, I think only 10% of computer science students are female. So already you're working with such a small pool, but there's some really good initiatives which are looking to increase that pool. So I know from being in the UK, there's things like apprenticeships, which are an, another route in, which is great to kind of help that pipeline at the beginning. And I've seen it in a few places in financial services that you either have, you have a big focus on getting females in and then at the top, getting them into managing director positions that you sometimes forget about the middle part of the funnel where they sometimes go. So loads of th things spring to mind. But I'm um, conscious of time. We do have lots of questions coming in. Um, I'm actually just gonna take one uh, that came in a bit earlier. Um, are any of you mothers? And if you are, did you? How did you manage taking maternity leave? Uh, how did you manage giving a hundred percent to all of the being a mother and work? I actually don't know if you are all mothers or not. So I know Sharina's because your son sometimes joins us on this. So I'd love your opinion on it as well. I am. <laughs> I have three kids. Uh, and I don't want to select my job or my kids, so I'm managing both, and I'm working full time, and I'm traveling. So it's not I don't want to, I don't want to choose. <laughs> I want to do both my job and my family and my kids. And I think that we don't need to choose. I don't know why we should uh, choose one side or another. One. So I'm clear on that, and I'm. I have no issue with my model. I think uh, I'm okay with the way that I'm managing that. <laughs> it's not an issue for me. Um, I'm just like, I have a lovely cat, which is uh, just sleeping there. So I am fully um, a mother too, because uh, it's my cat, my baby. But um, even when she tried to change my word pass, uh, on my computer, I, I, I have, I'm, I can give my time to my to my film. How about yourself, Shireen? Because you you are a mother as well. How have you found that in terms of managing work and motherhood? So it definitely can be challenging sometimes, but I, I I would completely agree with uh, Brune here. I think uh, we. It's not a question. We we don't have to choose. We should be both. Like fathers, they don't have to choose. <laughs> cool. So another question. Um, what is kind of the the next thing on your horizon for each of you that user, you know, both professionally and just in life. So, what what's next? How are you developing the business, etc.? Where do you see it going? So, uh, I think, I think, yeah, our <laughs> goal is pretty much to scale accurate uh, internationally, and uh, yeah, and we'll see where that takes us. But, um, but that's really what we want to do. Um, it's a bit the same for Serendipitech. Um, the thing is, um, 
I would say. Um, to be really frank, um, we will uh, scale and we will try to avoid those very rich, old, white men who want to buy us <laughs> before we scale. So, this is the message. If you look at me, I look at you. And we just want to continue having clients, serving clients, um, serving society and struggling against protest. Um, the mafias who um, make trafficking of people, trafficking of animals, trafficking of arms. And we do not want to just be a KYC firms and um, do not um, let people just, um, you know, uh, in this society, um, you're a good girl, you make a good job and let us continue, please, because we are better than you. So all my team, uh, they are supporting me uh, in the both sense. They, 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 they are crying sometimes, but we want to do things better and higher. And we do not want like, um, okay, those kind of, um, you know, things happening. So we will continue, whatever. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Great. So we have some more questions coming in. Um, so I'm just going to scroll through them. So one, um, which you touched upon a bit actually about finding females to join a team. So um, we've got someone here working on a financial inclusion project uh, for Africa, and they are looking for females to join their team. Do you have any advice on how to find um, more diverse team members in particular, actually, in other locations that you may not be based in yourself. Um, I, I do not know because actually we have many, many, many nationalities and it's uh, that part of diversity has really never been an, an issue. issue. So yeah. I yeah, I, I, no, I have no specific advice. But I think that what, what is also important, it's not only hiring uh, some diverse profiles, but also uh, being sure that we offer uh, a working environment that is uh, diversity friendly. And for the diverse nationalities that we have, I think we have a, yes, Spanish people, Italian, UK, Families, Chinese, and, and so we all speak English at the office. We are trying also to organize um, some elements to help them uh, to find an apartment in Paris, to build a very, uh, um, yes, an environment that yes. is diverse friendly. It's we, not only hiring a Christian. Yeah, we, can, we help, but usually when we have people who are um, outside of EU or things like that, we have agreements to help them get their working visa or their, if, I mean, whatever, open a bank account in France. Uh, so that I mean, all these things, uh, we have a setup uh, that's in place for that. It has nothing to do with gender, but um, we, yeah, we have so many um, applicants from um, various countries that we found very early on that although we were a very young startup and it's not something we had thought of, of, of of having in place so early, it really helps when you get candidates to tell them, well, if you need a social security number, we have this that's going to help you. If you need whatever a visa thing, we have this. If you need to open a bank account, we have this bank. That type of that type of, of thing. So it sounds like it's a it's all about offering that support to kind of actually attract the right people, offering the right support to get started with your company, if I was to try and sum it up. Well, because um, as Gwyn was saying, it's, it's, it's as important to get, give them a, a right, an environment where they feel good once they are here as it is to convince them to join. Because obviously it's a sector with a lot of, uh, of, 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 of turnover uh, very fast and if you want people to be good um, within your company and to want to stay and to build loyalty you really need to give them the full package of, of, of working conditions I would say. So Shireen I believe you've got the next question. 
from the audience. Yeah, it's actually a question from the audience about um, uh, what uh, what do you believe that young women need to know to to see or um, or to hear to consider technology as a career option? Maybe what would you say to young women? when considering a career in technology or in fintech? Um, what I would say is mostly that um, that it's um, it's not something that they should not consider. I mean, I would see more, it more the other way around. It's, it's, it's more that there's no reason not to consider it. There's no reason to think that it's not for you. There's no reason to think that you're not going to do well or that it's not going to be what I, I, I just think there's no reason to have any conscious or unconscious barrier towards that field. Um, and uh, I worked for different industries and I don't see any reason uh, for women uh, not to come in the technology uh, field or in the in the fintech uh, uh, field. There is absolutely no reason. And I think it's uh, they just need to do that and take the risk. And if I can, it's enthusiastic. It's uh, when you work in the um, technological field, you have no you you're working with people. Um, you will like the way they um, make their brain uh, working. You know, it's a bit binary, but it's always for the excellency. You have no trouble about behaving, and um, there you will work with people who want to create something. Uh, you come with an ID, and at the end you have a product. So it's quite a fascinating, um, and it's just try, just try. Take the risk, as Brun said. Take the risk, but it's a good risk with nice people. Yes, very nice people. Yeah, 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 I would add that is actually a very innovative space. <laughs> Lots of things happening in fintech, and your companies are very good examples of innovations in, in the fintech space. So, yeah, <laughs> we should have more women taking technology uh, careers. So, just a, a last question from me before we wrap up. Um, I always like to end these with kind of under asking everyone, what's the one thing that you maybe do or you like to encourage people to do day to day? So just to give you an idea, my version is I like to call out companies who have gender bias in certain things. So for example, there was an energy provider who said to um, on the website publicly to get a gas certificate, ask your engineer if he will. And I called them up, I tweeted, DM them on Twitter and I said, you've just assumed that engineers are male there um you you shouldn't and because of that they've then changed the way that the copywriting now works for the website they actually take into account do we have any gender bias terms in there uh, i just want to ask is there anything that you sort of do either day to day was there something that's in the back of your mind that to be a, an advocate for for equality and diversity and inclusion hi i would say i am the thing that I try to do day to day is to support my female colleagues in terms to doubt themselves. So I'd say, oh, you can do it. <laughs> I believe in you. I believe the support system we can have in a female network is something we can rely on. Um, I think something that I try to do is not, again, it's against unconscious biases that are often mine but it's not adopting codes that would not be my code just because that's the code of the environment where I want to fit in. And, and usually they're, 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 they're male dominated environments. So I try to consciously keep my code. And maybe ju just to add, but I fully agree with Anna, but uh, I think maybe explaining explaining why it can hurt, why it's, it's, it can be difficult, and why uh, women and men, and men need to pay attention to that topic. Um, I would say that it's um, so complex to be true and to be yourself uh, in a business 
that um, to get your um, employee and your people who want to work with you um, try to be themselves also. Um, this is a privilege of um, startups to change the roles, to change the uh, codes. And um, maybe we're not sure um, who we are at the beginning, but um, we will try together to, to, to find maybe um, find not a solution, but um, a definition. And uh, it's a travel. And I think startup is very short terming like in the minds, we have to be very uh, blah, 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 VC, money, and blah, blah, blah. But it's a human travel. And uh, even if we have to be quick for business, uh, it's, it's not meaning that we have to be quick and, and rude with people who work with them. So it's a travel. And um, for the first time, maybe in a career, we can be free. So just uh, take it easy to be free and not thinking about... Uh, gender old and just be free and uh, we will grow together bad or uh, good but it's it's a privilege to be in this kind of uh, situation and um, i just want to i just uh, to just uh, one thing um five years ago uh, as a woman when you met some vcs you have to apologize to be a woman you have to explain you have to 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 try to to do uh, as Brune said you have 10 minutes to be better than uh, men and um, due to finestra and other events and willa and and everybody's uh, you you have um, doing some change no this is a vc old, white, rich men who are trying to understand who we are. So this change is uh, a big change. You know what I mean? So even if uh, what I said is, was not interesting or whatever, you made a change because they are compared now to understand a bit more. And um, so it's easier for us to go to them and to just be and safe and explain who we are. So thank you very much. I think that's a, Thanks a lot. Oh, sorry, I was going to say a great note to finish on. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, it, it was an answer to the question about, um, no, it, it was not a conclusion, I'm sorry. It was an explanation of, <laughs> Oh. No. <laughs> it was actually a great conclusion. I will just add one thing to it, which is, um, also keeping uh, keeping uh, men in the discussion because gender equality is is not only a women's issue it's also men and we're really happy to have Ryan today and we're also happy to have him as a as a real supporter of the women at financial network so um, men could be great contributors to these kind of initiatives yeah great well thank you everyone for thank you to our speakers for joining and thank you for everyone for watching I uh, hope you found that helpful. We have more Behind the Hypes happening uh, next week and the week after, looking at how tech is disrupting the home buying journey and then diving into federated learning to do more with AI machine learning. So see you at the next Behind the Hype. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.